With every step I collide with you Like a tidal wave Crashing over me Rushing in to meet me here Your love is fierce Like a hurricane That I can't escape Tearing through the atmosphere Your love is fierce You cannot fail The only thing I've found through it all, you never let me down. You don't hold back, relentless in pursuit. And every step I come face to face with you, like a tidal wave crashing over me, rushing in to meet me. This fails like a hurricane that I can't escape. Tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fails. You chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost if you have called me found? You chase me down, seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down, you seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me found? Rushing in to meet me here Your love is fierce Like a hurricane That I can't escape Tearing through the atmosphere Your love is fierce Your love is fierce Your love So I, uh, I, used to, I used to want to be a professional skateboarder more than anything. I thought that's what um, my plan was. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I used to skateboard outside this church in Lowell, Arkansas. It's in northwest Arkansas. It's a small town in between Rogers and uh, Fayetteville. And uh, there was this church across the street from this trailer park that I lived in. I despised every second that I lived in that trailer park. Um, but this church was directly across the street, and churches normally have the most amazing asphalt and concrete for skateboarding on. Like, not for anything else. doesn't matter. Like, at that point in my life, I'm like, this is for skateboarding. And uh, so I'd be skateboarding out in this parking lot all the time, uh, daily, whether it be morning or directly after school or all day long on the weekends or whatever. Anyway, in between this big brick building and another smaller brick building, there was this room that was about half the size of this stage that had a, a brick and mortar bench about like this wooden altar that was built for me to skateboard on. So I thought. And so I would be skateboarding in here. It was out of the wind. It was out of the rain. Um, it was out of the sunlight. I'm like, this is perfect. This is perfect. I would do 50-50 grinds and no stalls and all this stuff is so loud. A skateboard is loud. You've probably never seen a skateboard. Have you seen anybody in here skateboard at all? Yeah, come on. You gotta so I would be skateboarding in this room that was built for me and on this brick and mortar bench that was built for me. And, and often this lady, this gray-haired lady, would open the door and she'd say, Hey, either come inside 
or leave because we're trying to have service. And I would be like, <laughs> I would skateboard off mad because 14-year-old me, I didn't know what service was, right? All I knew is they were interrupting my skateboarding, and I was not okay with that, right? So this one day I was in this parking lot, and I was learning heel flips at the time, and a heel flip is something that, you know what? Actually, you guys probably are much more about snowboarding than skateboarding. I get that. I understand it because you have paradise to snowboard in. So it'd be like you learning this specific trick on a snowboard and you getting injured every time that you're trying to do this trick. That was me and heel flips, right? Because I was trying to learn these heel flips and I would end up on my back or the board would crack me across the shins and I still have dention, indentions in my shin bones that hurt to the touch now. And this kid walks up to me. He's like, hey, can I see your board? I'm like, sure. He does a heel flip, right? I'm like, that was a heel flip. He landed it first try. I'm like, that, that was awesome. Like, I'd been trying to learn heel flips for three months, right? I'm like, how long did it take you to learn that? He's like, a couple weeks. I'm like, cool. So he's like, we're having some, some junk food inside if you're interested. And so we, we walk over, and we're going into this big white building, and they call it the fellowship hall, right? I'm like, up until that point, I'd only skateboarded on their wooden wheelchair ramps, like, and then turn before flipping over into the bushes at the bottom, right? So I'm like, fellowship hall, okay. So I walk in, red carpet, that dark brown paneling with the black stripes in it, hideous, right? Reminded me of the trailer park. Reminded me of my bedroom. I'm like, great. What is this? So I walk in, and uh, there's more food than I'd ever seen in my life down this one side of the room. It's a potluck dinner, right? I'm like, what is this? Like, my mind is spinning. Like, I'm like, who are these people? Like, why are they here? What's going on? Um, and they're like, oh, you're the kid that's always skateboarding in the parking lot. Wow, you're welcome here anytime. I'm like, welcome. I've been ran off a hundred times. Like I'm like, thanks. And they're like, hey, be sure and eat. Be sure and eat. And like, it's like 80 people of all ages, right? It's a mixed room, much like this right here. You've got little toddlers crunching cookies into the carpet, and you've got teenagers who are like, I'm bored out of my brain right now. And then you've got people who are 70, 80, 100 something, right? Like, And I'm like, this is crazy. And if I use the word diverse, I'd be like, this is the most diverse crowd of people I've ever seen. But I, I didn't use that word at that point. They're like, be sure and eat. And I'm sitting here with a plate full of food. Be sure and eat. I'm like, okay. So this gray-haired woman walks across the room. I'm like, great. Like, ruining everything, right? She walks up. She's like, tell me your name. I'm like, Matt. She's like, Matt, it's so good to have you here. You're welcome here anytime. I'm like, Welcome to confusion, right? I'm like, this is the person who had asked me to leave so many times, right, because of service. And uh, that night, I heard that Jesus loved me and had a plan for my life. I'm like, cool, whoever that is, I know what my plan is. I'm going to be a professional skateboarder, right? I didn't know who Jesus was. I hadn't experienced anything about Jesus. And so I'm like, it's it, these people who they have no clue who I am, they don't care who I am. They don't care that I live in the trailer park across the street. They don't care that my father is an alcoholic. They don't care that my parents fight every single night. They don't care how much I despise school and living where I lived. They accepted me for who I was. I had nothing to offer them at all. And they're giving me free food, right? And they're telling me I'm welcome here anytime. And so, man, my mind is just like, what's happening right now? So... I decided that I was going to go there every Sunday morning for church, every Sunday night for church, every Wednesday evening for youth group. Every time they piled 20 of us into a 12-passenger van to go to Pizza Inn to get free pizza, I was going. Every time they're like, hey, we're going to Devil's Den State Park camping. You want to go? I'm like, let's do it, right? And so we would go, and we would spend all night long being lost in these caves and caverns, and no way should anybody have let us go at all. But I fell in love with those people, and I wanted to be around them every opportunity I could get, right? So fast forward a few weeks in, and we're in that fellowship hall again, that big white building with the terrible brown paneling and the red carpet. <clears throat> and this guy named Johnny, he was in the youth group, he decides that he's going to impress the girls because that's what guys do. 
of all ages, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're like, I've got to get her attention somehow. <clears throat> and so Johnny decides that he's going to get a chair out in the center of the room, and he's going to jump up, and he's going to touch this part of the ceiling that comes down. It's like a divider. Nowadays, you would slide a curtain across it as like a divider. There's no curtain, but there was something to jump up and touch. <laughs> so Johnny gets out this chair, and he's like... He goes jumping off this chair and tagging the ceiling. And, of course, the girls don't care. There's about 15 of them sitting along this wall like, what is happening? They're waiting on their parents to pick them up after youth group. So they're just like, as soon as this is, can be over, great. So Johnny's jumping off this chair, and then Mitch gets up, and he's jumping off the chair, and he plays football. So, of course, he's going to do really good at it. And then Chris and Mitch and Sam and Johnny and all this stuff. And I'm sitting right here on a piano bench waiting for something amazing to happen patiently waiting because at that point i have put him out immediately sorry um <clears throat> okay so th up until that point my experience with these guys who are like um athletic jockey whatever was me sitting on a cross tie watching them play what they called tag football which always turned to rugby, especially with youth group kids. And I'm sitting there, and, and I watched John get his collarbone broken, like, out of his body one night. I'm like, whoa, crazy. And he's, like, the long-distance track guy, so he was in trouble. Sam, who was the starting center for the football team, he broke his ankle about half off one night. Luckily, it was just a sprain, but he was in trouble. And so I'm like, this is going to be sweet, whatever is about to happen. So I'm sitting on this piano bench. They're jumping off this chair. There's about seven girls left at this point because they don't care about it. Donnie, who is Johnny's younger brother, gets up, flies off the chair, gets like a whole arm's length higher than the rest of them, just sits down like it never happened. And so Johnny's like, I got this, right? So he gets up, <clears throat> he takes off running, bam, jumps off the chair, goes out from under him. He's flying through the air horizontal. I'm right here, and I can see the whites of his eyeballs, right? He's like, and he... His arm hits the carpet first, and his body weight on top of that, and so it makes his elbow come over and up. And so if you can imagine this being over and up into his armpit, that's what you saw, and it was incredible, right? Uh, and so I'm like, no way. I'm going to get up, and he's like laying there. He's like, he's like trying to push this arm back into place. That's not happening, right? I'm like, dude, your arm is wrecked, right? He's like, <laughs> so the girls stand up, and they're like, Psh, and walk out. Like, they're gone. Like, they're, they're no more in this room. And I'm like, I have to be around these people for the rest of my life. I have to. They're too entertaining. Like, they are crazy in an amazing way. And you know what? More than that, they love me for who I am. They do not care who I am, where I come from, what baggage I might carry. And um, so on February 2nd of 1992, which is roughly about a month after I started going to this church and whatever, uh, I wanted to know who Jesus was. So I'll never forget it because it was the biggest moment in my life. February 2nd, 1992, 6.32 p.m. is when I asked Jesus to come into my heart and I surrendered my life to him. And uh, did I know what was coming? No, not at all. Did I know that I would be here this morning in paradise playing tunes for you? Complete strangers until now. But God's plan was bigger. God's plan was different than mine. I'm glad I'm not a professional skateboarder. Uh, the money would be amazing. If I was Tony Hawk or Steve Caballero or Christian Hasoy. But I wouldn't have been doing this. I wouldn't have been able to. I could have traveled. That's fine. But my wife would have never cared about a professional skateboarder because she loves music. Because she ran a music venue in Des Moines, Iowa. And 17 years ago, my band played this music venue. And I could not believe that she existed and for some reason she talked to me and I had never asked anybody for their number and I'm like could I please call you and she's like yeah sure did I think she gave me the right number no way I, thought, I was like hello Jim oh sorry <laughs> wrong number 
she gave me the right number. And you know what was even cooler is the day after we played this music venue in Des Moines, Iowa, which we had played several times, but I'd never noticed her. I didn't know. Is we went to church with some kids that came to the show like, dude, do you guys want to go to church with us tomorrow? We're like, yeah, sure. We only have to drive two hours. So we go to church, and I'm standing at the top of the bleachers at this school gymnasium where this church met, and I turn and look, and she's at the bottom of the bleachers, and my heart about literally burst out of my chest. I'm like, what do I do? Uh, she came up and she's like, hey, like, hey, you want to sit with us? I'm like, yep. <laughs> so, so think of your life. Think of who you are right now. Look back at your life. Look at your journey. If you could look at it like a map, okay? If you could see it the way God sees it, as a perfectly planned out map through all of those rivers and valleys and mountains and roadblocks and heartache and anger and bitterness, if you could look at your life and you're standing here right now, it makes sense. You're like, oh, 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 that I... <laughs> I didn't think I was going to make it through that. That's crazy. Look at that. You know what? That was perfectly placed in that what if. And look at who you are now. And I promise you this, as a 41-year-old human being who's been playing rock and roll for a lot of years and who has had a lot of conversations with a lot of people, Christian, non-Christian, whatever, if you could look at your life and look at what it built you into, the things that you've gone through, the times you thought you would never make it. And here you are right now, you made it. You made it to this point. Did God know what you're up against? Yeah. Did he plan it that way? Yeah. Does he love you? Yes. Does he know where you're going from here? Yes. And the things that you've gone through in life that have built you into being able to survive to here has prepared you for what's ahead. So from this moment on, know that no matter what happens, God's not surprised. He's never been surprised. He's not disappointed. He's like a father who's trying to reason with his children, like, how many times have you been told, do not stand on the table because this, you know? I can't imagine my life any other way. I can't imagine my life being something of where God didn't take me on this ridiculous journey. And it started with skateboarding. And it eventually turned into playing rock and roll. And he loves me. And he gave me a tool. I'm not good at what I do. I just, I'm along for the ride. And God lets me go. And so often the conversation that I have standing outside some bar in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana, talking to some guy who's like, so you guys are a Christian band? I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's crazy. I'm like, yeah, God loves you. has a plan for your life. That's all I have to say because I can't make someone believe. But the Holy Spirit can walk in and wreck that person's life in a way that they're like, this has to be God because it makes no sense. When we're talking about this thing of some people like certain music, some people don't. Some people like skiing, some people don't. Some people like hunting, some people don't. Man, we're created so different and God did it on purpose to show his love. To show that like he loves you no matter how much you've jacked up your life. The same way as like, oh really? You don't believe in Jesus at all? You think that when you die you're done? That's it? That's crazy. I have a hope that Jesus came to this earth and died for me. That someday I'll see him in heaven forever in paradise. I'm like really? That's crazy. I've never even thought of that. You're like I know isn't that crazy? And so the two most opposite human beings on the planet come together. And one of them tells the other like man God loves you. has a plan for your life. That's why you're here. I never thought of that. The same way me being here this morning. Why? Because I had a day off and I despise days off. If I'm going to be away from my family, I want to feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. And if God opens up a door, it's going to bring me to Bonner's Ferry. And I'm going to hang out with some of my extended family that I've never met before. That if all goes well, I'll see them in heaven. 
forever. So I'm your crazy uncle who came to visit. And at some point, we'll meet again, whether here or there. I can't wait. But until then, I'm going to take advantage of being able to use my eyeballs to see stuff like this and to stand there on some dark street corner and talk to someone about the love of God. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. Thanks for being okay with it. Thanks for Facebook. I, what? You ever think you'd say that? Thanks to Facebook? I'm going to play this song um, just because I, f- I feel like it's one of those things that so often we get tied up in the things that are going on here in this world, in this life, that we lose sight of the goal. Our goal is to try to finish strong and to try to take as many people with us to heaven as possible by loving them. Not by judging, not by telling them this or this or this. Or you're wrong here. Man, there's a lot of, I got a lot wrong with me. Every person I talk to every day has a lot wrong with them. But we've heard that. We know it. We already know what's going right. Man, you're still walking today. That's great. Man, you showed up this morning. That's great. Man, you're breathing. That's great. Man, God loves you. That's great. If we could face each day waking up and be like, God, thank you for allowing me to see today. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you for allowing me to walk today. Thank you for allowing me to come in contact with some of the most annoying human beings on earth today. Please help me tell them how much you love them. So let us not get tangled up and wrapped up too much and take ourselves too seriously here. But let us look towards future. Let us look towards this moment on. Not all the things we've done in the past. We know it. Some of the people in this room have seen you at your worst. It's family. It's community. And if we looked at it from the eyes of God, that's the family of God. It's us. All of these poor decisions and brokenness. I had a conversation with a guy. It's been a few years ago, but he was dealing with leukemia. He was in and out of treatment, back and forth. And his faith was so rooted in Jesus and where he was going that he's like, oh, man, it's all good. As long as I have time here on earth, I'm going to tell people about the hope of Jesus. So, I mean, whenever God wants me to go home, I'll go home. But I'm going to make the best out of it while I'm here. I believe that if I was with him five minutes before he closed his eyes for the last time and he opened them in heaven, I believe that this song, these lyrics are probably what he would say to me. And so if you're dealing with loss, which I've, I heard some of the announcements, there's people that are going to be facing loss. It's not new. It's not something that we haven't dealt with because we've all lost someone, and it, it hurts. We think back of all the amazing memories we had. We think back of all the terrible memories we had. But the ones that are the brightest are the good ones. So this morning, if there's been someone who has inspired you in your faith with a kind word, with a hug, think of them. Beyond that, think of Jesus. Thank you for letting me be here this morning. I do appreciate it. You could have heard a pin drop When they walked into the room She said she felt her heart stop When they gave her the news It's just a matter of time There's nothing that we can do It's just a matter of time There's no question why He's asking for you And he said in a heartbeat a second a blink of an eye i'll be home alive and by his side don't you waste a single moment to cry cause i'll be 
just fine The burdens I've carried for all of these years Tears that I've cried would disappear I'll be singing with angels in by his side Cause I'll be in heaven by tonight I've heard a lot of heartbreak And I've seen a lot of tears But oh, I have to wonder What would he say if he were here? Just a matter of time There's nothing that we can do Tired weather and morning And he's still holding on To what he knows is true In a heartbeat a second A blink of an eye I'll be home alive and by his side Don't you waste a single moment to cry Cause I'll be just fine all of these years, tears that have cried will disappear. I'll be singing with angels there by his side, cause I'll be in heaven by tonight. Heaven by tonight. Heaven by I can see heaven open wide. I can see the Savior. I can hear the angels. I can see heaven open wide. I can see the Savior. Right there by his side Right there by his side Right there by his So I, um, earlier I, I didn't realize how long I was going to stand here and stare at you guys awkwardly during announcements and stuff. So I have to apologize for not leaving the stage and <laughs> cause I'm like, I should have walked away. I should have walked away. Why didn't I, should I walk away now? Like, uh, so, uh, anyway, yeah, now I'm here. I'm stuck. Um, <coughs> Here's a, uh, I'll just play the song. Um, I wish that, so I wish that things worked out better sometimes when it comes to manufacturing of CDs and stuff like that. Because sometimes you go above and beyond and you rush order CDs and you pay two day air to make sure that they show up in Pocatello, Idaho like they're supposed to. So that you have songs that can relate to people. Uh, but they didn't show up. And uh, I'm still trying to figure out where in the world they're at. But anyway, this next song is a, a song that's on a worship record that I did a couple years ago. Um, it's about brokenness, but it's about hope. And so hopefully this song uh, can relate to you um, in some way. This song is called Keeper of My Heart. He 
here I am, here I am, more broken than I've ever been, trying to find myself, but where do I begin, where do I begin, crying out, crying out to you, cause I can't live without your love, so I am here and I'll be waiting on you, waiting on you now. I never knew how much I needed you, but you've opened my eyes and touched my heart, showed me who you are. You are forever, you are the one Light in the darkness, you are the sun Of God you are The keeper of my heart I will be I will be a light for all the world to see a reflection of you and never me you have set me free oh i never knew how much i needed you but you've opened my eyes and touched my heart showed me who you you are forever, you are the one. Light in the darkness, you are the sun of God. You are the keeper of my heart. You are forever, you are the one. Light in the darkness, you are the sun of God. You Walked a million miles in these shoes. I'll walk a million more after you, so I can live safe inside your arms. I walked a million miles in these shoes. I walk a million more after you, so I can live. Save inside your arms. You are forever. You're the one. Light in the darkness. You are the sun of God. You are the keeper of my heart. You are forever. You're the one. Light in the darkness. You are the sun of God. You are the keeper of my heart. Thank you guys for letting me be here this morning. Thank you. Alan changed his mind in the middle of the stream here, and Merle says, no, you do it, you do it. <laughs> Matt, wherever you're at, where are you at? That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. You brought a lot of beautiful messages to all of us, I'm sure, and I really, really, we all enjoyed it. Thank you. We're in Proverbs 16, 7 through 9. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, 
but the Lord establishes their steps. You know how good God is? I have my sermon ready for next week. <laughs> if you um, are interested in the Sunday school class that Polly and Sherry are going to be leading, I also have a couple of books of discipline up here. Be sure that you get one, okay? Um, we're not doing the message. We're doing something a little different. Um, and I don't want to take away from his testimony, but I want to talk to you about a few things. Let's start with prayer. Father, we are so graciously thankful that you are who you are, that you do love us, that you do have a plan for us, as those scriptures that we just said. We so many times get up and think, oh, how I'm going to face life, and this is my plan, and everything else, but you're the one behind you created us. You designed us. You created us to worship you, to be in a relationship with you. And then you bought us back with the blood, blood of Jesus Christ. If we would just believe. If we would put our faith and confidence in you. And oh, how much better we would be if we would realize that and follow through with your plans and instead of having to be constantly prodded and poked in the direction that you would have us to go. Lord, we just thank you for... Matt's testimony for him being here today. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the spirit that so well ties us together and equips us for this life that you have planned for us. Thank you for the breath of life that you have given us and for the new life that you have given us by your spirit. We just thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you got to go with us Friday, we went and saw I Can Only Imagine. It's uh, Bart's story of how that song came to be. And I was looking for an interview is what I was trying to do. No, it's not. Um, and anyway, he was on a morning show, and that, that came to me, and I was trying to find it, but I couldn't find it, where he sang one of his newest songs, which is Even If, which even if, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if you're not there with me, I will still follow you. I will still put my total faith, trust, and confidence in you and in you alone. And that's, that, that's what John 3.16 means. That's belief, if you believe. Because see, we're approaching Easter and everything, and that was the promise that God made that He showed all throughout, even through the disobedience of the Israelites and everything else. And, and God had chosen a nation, but it wasn't just about the nation. It was about the nation showing the world again who God was. Go back to Exodus and read how many times the same thing is repeated over and over and over again. Let my people go so they may worship me. And I will do wondrous things so the world will know that I am God. And see, that's what He wants to do with your life also, he's in control. He has a plan. But so many times we think we're directing those steps and we have no idea. I had no idea that I would wind up here either. Praise God that I am. And I thank him every day for being in this beautiful place. Because see how I wound up here, and some of you know some of that, some of you don't, is our marriage, our life was not in the best shape. And I wasn't really walking with God the way that I should have. I'd been trained up in the ways of righteousness. Thank God for that. I'd gone to a Christian school. But my wife was off getting help for addiction to alcohol and prescription drug use. And I'd let her go there to die. Because I didn't see any other answer in God's plan. I had been in a miserable marriage for a long time. And if you know... You've heard it said before, and I said it at Valentine's Day, which you might not even know that I said it, um, when we had the community service on Valentine's Day. But it happened to be that Jacob was able to speak then, and I was able to speak then, and we spoke that. I gave her a dozen orange roses on Valentine's Day. And everybody knows you're supposed to give red roses. So that was justification to slap a divorce on me. That's how out of it she was. 
and coaxed by her mother. That's one reason we moved out here and we're not kidding when we say it. Why would you wind up this far away? Well, we could have went to Washington or, or we didn't think about Hawaii at the time. Why did we not? <laughs> God put those spiritual blinders. Or we could go to Alaska, but we found this place in northern Idaho. But see, I didn't find it with my wife. I came out with my son and my mother and we went touring and we looked at places in Colorado and stuff because we wanted to get as far away from her mother as we could, not knowing that God had His plans and everything and not knowing that my wife would get well. And then the first girl that comes along, thank you, Lord, for bringing this girl into my life, which I should have ran from the temptation. Instead, I fell to the temptation and went into an adulterous relationship. She got well. And she forgave me for what I did and said, how can you forgive me for what I did? What I did doesn't compare. But see, that's where we stand in God's eyes. He doesn't care about those mistakes before. He cares about who you are in Jesus Christ and the plans that He has for you. We've got to realize that so we don't waste this life that we've been given if you know Him through His Son. And if you don't, oh, come to know Him. We got put into youth ministry on my birthday. That was my birthday present of all things. Remember that, Bonnie? Lowell said, will you take over the youth group? Okay, this must be God talking because he's asking me on my birthday. I don't want youth. I don't like those kids. I'm alienating them from them. They're dirty. They're nasty. I don't want any part of it. What I want is this little Bible group of, of these eager teenagers wanting to learn about God. Not these that are searching, that are outcasts, that the rest of the world, that, that one of the pastors even told me, I'm so glad and thankful you have those kids. And I wanted to punch him in the mouth. My wife did. And my wife almost did. <laughs> but he put me with those kids so that I could learn that we are all the same. We're all God's children. We're all searching. That we can be tied together with His Spirit and love one another so that there will be no divisions among us. So that message of the cross isn't so foolish to us, but it is the power of God that is saving us, that is walking us through our salvation. And we need to show that unity that we have, that those changed lives that our testimonies are the biggest thing that we can share with other people so that they can see that the power of God is real in our lives. Makes all the difference in the world. This movie, Mercy Me, I was watching, or I can only imagine... He played his newest song, uh, Even If, and then he played I Can Only Imagine, of course. Which, guess what? Most of you are familiar with that song because it's probably the biggest Christian song there is, Ooh, even like Amazing Grace and stuff, because of, again, the broadness that it went. And if you don't know, it made, I don't know how high it went, on the pop chart and the country chart. So people that weren't used to that got to hear that song. And he said in the middle of that interview on the Today Show, whatever it was, I don't know, that's what I couldn't find. She said, well, what, what prompted you to write this song? Because of my love for Jesus Christ, because He first loved me. So that got said on national television. He didn't say much more than that. It was very simplistic. But he said, it's all because of God's love. That's why I write this song. Then they hear this song. Then I watched an interview with um, Dennis Quaid, who happens to play his father in the movie. And I could not imagine that Dennis Quaid had never heard that song prior to playing that part. I could not imagine that. I don't know what impact it's had in his life. I don't know if he's a believer or non-believer. I have, have no clue. But guess what? He heard that song. He got to hear Bart's testimony through the movie. It was a fabulous movie. I pray that you go see it. And I'm so thankful that I got to go with the church that God has given me. Seventeen of us went. And what a wonderful time of fellowship we had. And I was so tickled that Hannah got to go and, it, and to hear that she had a good time. Because she's a teenager. She's searching to see if our faith is genuine or not. Literally, she is. Because she can't see or touch God. She can see creation and everything. But she says, I wonder. And she's looking at each one of us. And to see the other 16 of us go and, and see the message it was and see that their age difference didn't matter, anything else that we could get along, speaks volumes to her. I told you that in 1 Corinthians, 
we got to this verse. 1 Corinthians 3, I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's what it's about, period. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it really is. Because the day, the day that Jesus Christ returns, and He will return as God promised because God is faithful, and He will come to judge, and as we read a little bit further, to reward also. Their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. The light came into the world, but we refused to see it because of our darkness that was inside us. We didn't want those things exposed. Matt and I just exposed some things to you today because it doesn't matter as long as we can glorify Jesus Christ. The day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. That new life that you were given, born of the Spirit, what you're doing with it, what you're doing with what cost God His one and only Son, which caused Jesus Christ to suffer and die for you, to bring you back to a right relationship, to give you life and to give you abundant life. <clears throat> Verse 14, If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. Not might, but will. I don't think he's talking about just heaven here. I think he's talking about a little bit more. It might be just that well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't know what it is. But I'm longing for my father to be proud of me, for Jesus to bring his reward with him and say, well done. Verse 15, if it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. And see, that verse gets more focused than any of the other verses there. Because what that verse says to so many people is, if I don't live a life of worth, if I live a life for myself, I can still be saved through the flames. Have you ever seen a person saved through the flames? They're burnt. Their body is burnt and mutilated. And they have to live with that. And in this case, for all of eternity, because they wouldn't give their life over to God the way that He planned, the way that He gave His Son to die for them? Why would I want to escape through the flames? Why would I not want to focus on the reward that I had by building a proper foundation because of the life I lived because of what Jesus Christ did for me? See, we focus on the wrong things because we still need to repent and change our way of thinking. To think how precious a gift we've been giving. That the Spirit ties us all together so that there will be no divisions among us. So that we can draw one another home for all glory. Doesn't matter what music style, doesn't matter what dress, doesn't matter anything else. What matters, Paul said it before, is the gospel that was already preached, which is Jesus Christ. That's what matters. That's all that matters. So next week, you'll get to hear about a time to decide... <laughs> But you know, there's no problem with today's society because today is the day of salvation. I had no idea. Come on up, Matt, because you can close us in just a minute. I had no idea that God would bring me to Bonners Ferry, Idaho or that I would have the privilege of being your pastor. I even bucked that when the time came. This is foolish, God. I don't have the training. I don't have it. Oh, what's that scripture? He chooses the foolish things of the world. We just, we just read that. That's where we're at in Corinthians again. Do you think it's a coincidence that we're in Corinthians today? you think it's a coincidence that I brought up music as a division and Matt's here? He just performed last night with some major, not saying you're not major, <laughs> Christian bands. And he's here today in Bonners Ferry, Idaho. That's no coincidence, that's God. God moving His people to be His faithful children, bringing light to this world. We just saw a song 
I mean, saw a movie about a song that's a contemporary Christian song. Next week, we're going to see a movie with a contemporary artist in it from a group called King and Country, which is on your CD. No coincidence. God is saying, take all the divisions out of the body of Christ so you can be the bride that I'm preparing for that day. Because that day is coming. And we're one day closer than we were yesterday. And then I'll take my children home, that bride, that church, the body of Christ has been given this privilege to be the hands and feet of Jesus as we walk this earth. So as Matt closes us, here's your altar call. Whether you want to come up here or not come up here or sit at your seat, it's time to decide. Are you going to do something with the life that God gave you? If it is coming to Him for the first time, it doesn't matter when you do, it doesn't matter what you did. He's saying, come. I want to be your loving father. Maybe you don't understand that. Maybe you had an abusive father. Maybe you had the best father. But he's the best father. He will never let you down. He will never forsake you. His arms will cover anything. He's there with you, period. And he's directing your steps anyway, whether you realize it. You'll wind up in Bonner's Ferry today of all places telling about Jesus Christ. With my new, you're not my uncle, you're my brother. <laughs> because that's what motivates us and drives us. Till we see Jesus Christ face to face and He takes us home. So whatever you want to do right now, here's your chance. Come up at your seat, whatever, make things right with God today. You might not have another chance, you might. But today is the day, the time to decide. Thank you for being here, man. You came down to this side of heaven to take away all my failures and my fears. You came down to this side of heaven to take my place and to wipe away my tears and I know that I owe you more than I could ever repay but I'll see you someday this side of heaven when you come down to this side of heaven the clouds will roll away and angels will appear when you come down to this side of heaven when my troubles of this world are gone and sorrow disappears and I know that I owe you more than I could ever repay. But I'll try it anyway. Hey, this side of heaven. Oh. And I'll fly away to a place that's far beyond anything I've ever dreamed you'll say, come with me. I'll fly away to a place that's far beyond anything. I've ever dreamed you'll say, come with me, I'll fly away to a place that's far beyond anything. I've ever 
Jesus, we're so grateful for today. God, help us understand that today is the most important day of our life. Because the day that we can start over, that we can be reborn, that we can start anew, that your love and your grace can pour over us, that's the best day of our life. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you. Amen. Am I still on? Um, Jacob wants to do something, but I also want to say he's got some CDs back there. They're of the group. They're the rock, Christian rock music, like, okay? Some headbanging stuff, even. <laughs> some ballad stuff too I think I listened to several of them I heard the one song the one song you did um, a little bit ago not now is on that one CD okay it's an older one okay because I had heard the one when I was googling and you YouTubing it so um those are for sale. That's how he makes his money. John, if you'll get an offering plate back there, we'll take a love offering up for him also. And I will say one of the things that I came up here to pray for is that, that um, I become less so that he can become more and thank him for being here. But see, even this morning, I had to repent, change my way of thinking. Because in my foolish mind, I was sitting here saying, why would Matt show up today? I haven't even talked to him. I hadn't. Jacob had. Via text. Did you talk to him on the phone either? Facebook, Facebook and text. That's not in person. <laughs> it's not even communication as far as I'm concerned. It is, but it isn't. And I'm like, why would he be up here today? Have you heard from him? Have you heard from him? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, is he going to be here? <laughs> well, we'll back up and pun if he's not. Because in my mind, why in the world... Would he come up here to be with us today? Wow. I'm sorry, God. You are in control. You design everything. You direct our steps. You are King of kings, Lord of lords. And we thank you and praise you. Go ahead and do what you're going to do.